Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 178. I've got a fantastically uh, high quality calisthenics workout. I really, really enjoyed doing this workout. This is probably one of the best upper body workouts I've done in a long time. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to share some of that enjoyment with you guys too as well. And um, hopefully I'll be able to inspire and give you guys some good quality content based around this workout, give you some good value that you can use uh, taking into your training as well. So I started off as usual with my mobility, um, general warm up. I actually used to do skipping as opposed to my jumping jacks and my seal jacks, but you know, figured I'd just mix it up. Um, my skipping rope actually broke. I go through them really easily. Um, but you know, it doesn't really matter what you do for a warm up. Uh, there's my neighbor there. He's actually having a fire around the back and you know, he's always great to talk to. You wouldn't believe it, but that guy is like 65 years old and he's still in really, really good shape. Just goes to show what a healthy lifestyle can actually do for you. Okay, so I started off with some muscle ups and I had no intention of doing weighted muscle ups today, but um, these felt really, really good. I felt like my nervous system was definitely firing. These felt really easy. You can see how high I'm getting over the bar every single rep. Um, it's almost like I'm getting my sort of like mid chest, sort of below my mid chest and getting my sort of belly to the bar um, on the high reps, especially on the first three to four reps. Um, and I did two sets of five, just unweighted with just my body weight. Uh, then I moved into doing just gradually increasing the weight on the weighted pull up, on the weighted muscle up. So my heaviest ever single on a weighted muscle up was 10. And today, spoiler, I actually managed to get 10 kilos for two reps, which is pretty impressive, I would say. Pretty decent for me. Uh, these reps here almost look like shotgun muscle ups. Maybe the first one there before this one. Uh, and it just goes to show that when you are activated, your nervous system is firing properly, then um, workouts become a lot easier. You can't always have every single workout like this, and it's kind of stupid to expect that, but when you have workouts like this, you just have to make sure that you make the most of them and you really enjoy it. Uh, you really, you know, make sure that you get a high, nice high stimulus and you really push yourself. So here is a set, this is the set with seven and a half kilos. Got seven and a half kilos for two reps, move pretty well. And then I was like, okay, screw it. I'm definitely gonna go up to 10. And I managed to get, I failed on the first rep, almost had that one, just couldn't quite get over. Uh, and then I decided that I would do a set of 10 to two. Just about got them in. I'm keeping a little bit more of the legs than I'd like to, but uh, you know, I still think these reps are relatively clean. I'm pretty happy with them. And that is a two RMPR on the weighted muscle ups. Then I moved into my front lever. Because my nervous system was firing, I was getting you know, more contraction from those high threshold motor units that produce the most force, those type 2A and type 2X uh, muscle fibers. You're able to produce more force in a short, short amount of time. Um, when I'm doing my front lever then, I'm able to hold it more securely. So I actually tried a slightly more advanced tuck front lever where I'm trying to extend my hips and knees as much as possible. Uh, so it's basically like a front lever hold, but um, then as soon as I couldn't hold it any longer, then I'd move into a straddle front lever. So I think there's definitely benefit to actually changing the variety or the variation of front lever that you do mid set. As you get fatigued in one, then you can move into the next because it just means that you get more time and attention on those muscles. Um, and as long as your torso and your core is more or less in the same position, it shouldn't matter too much what your legs are doing. It's kind of like doing a drop set with weights when you do like a movement. Say for example, you do lateral raises, you start with a lighter weight and then you just start with a heavy weight, sorry, and then you just get gradually lighter and lighter so you can get more volume in essentially. So I think going forward, I'm gonna start experimenting more with that on front lever. So as soon as I sort of like lose the tension or I lose the position with a straddle front lever, just bring it in and do an advanced tuck or even a tuck front lever so that then um, the rest of the set, I can still maintain that position just with a slightly easier leg variation by changing the length of the lever. Uh, then I decided I would do some front lever raises where I go up with the front lever and then down with the straddle front lever. So it's harder on the concentric and a little bit easier on eccentric so I can lower really, really slowly and once again, get as much time and attention for the muscles in the back and the grip and the forearms. And all the while I was supersetting this with handstand holds. And interestingly enough, when I tried to do handstands today, what I was focusing on here was actually instead of looking more like down and behind me, like towards the wooden plank on the wall there, I actually decided I would look towards the floor and keep more of my weight in the middle of my palm, but also try to engage my lats a little bit. Um, I was watching a video of a calisthenics athlete called Ian Barnsegel, you guys probably have heard of him. And I was watching when he first tried handstands, he was actually not trying to get into that extreme hollow body position. 
he was kind of more leaning so his torso was more back and his shoulders were more over the front of his palms over the front of his fingertips so he was kind of more in like an incline press position and it looked like he had way more stability like that and when you see people actually doing handstand push-ups they're never just going like directly straight down directly straight up their, their torso isn't perpendicular to the floor their torso is actually kind of like more of a, a inclined angle and then they're sort of pushing more with the anterior deltoids and the upper chest and i feel like that's a much better position which makes you more stable when you're doing a handstand push-up at least from my experience and what i've seen uh so i think you, you, what you saw earlier was actually probably like a seven to eight second hold for me on the handstand which is like a freestanding hold that's the probably one of the longest i've ever done but it wasn't in the perfect hollow body position so i feel like with handstands you need to get wh whatever position you can do the hold in then do that and then learn to optimize the posture in that position later you know get your get your handstand position no matter what position you do that in get that first and then optimize later rather than trying to like force the hollow hollow body position the whole time and then just sort of let them like fix them. I think it would take you a lot longer to do it that way. Although your technique will be absolutely perfect, it might take you, I don't know, six months to a year to learn it properly. But if you can just get used to doing handstand hold in like a decent position, maybe it's not perfect, and then optimize the technique afterwards, I feel like that's a much faster and more effective way to learn. Uh, then I moved into some heavy sets of weighted push-ups, worked up to a top set of 40 for five reps, which moved pretty well, heaviest I've ever done. And I think if you work out how much weight you do when you do just a regular push-up flat ground, I think it's about 65 to 70% of your body weight. And realistically, right now, I am about 85 kilos. I'm pretty lean, but 85 kilos is more or less where I'm at. I'm trying to consciously eat more food to put on a bit of size. Uh, but still lean muscle mass i'm not trying to gain too much fat so uh yeah so 60 to 70 percent of 80 kilos is about uh it's about 50 kilos 50 60 kilos um which would equate to when i do an extra 40 kilos on the weighted push-ups that would equate to more through that would equate to about 100 kilos we'll say we'll call it 100 but through a more full range of motion that's basically like doing bench press but like with excessive range of motion so it's kind of like me benching five reps with an extended range of motion um with the weight and also being able to control my scapula i feel like that's a lot more effective as i said the other week or whenever i last said it is this a movement that's actually better than bench press for athleticism i think i would have to err on the side of yes this is more more athletic than bench press uh, then I moved into some weighted pull-ups and here you're watching a 50 kilo single. I'm not sure I'm going to give myself that rep to be honest. I wasn't like fully locking up strong at the top. Uh, but then decided to do a back off set with 25 kilos, like half the weight and see if I can get as many reps as possible. I think I got like six here. Uh, I must say chin-ups are really difficult for me because you can see, just look at my proportions. I've got a really long back and I've got really, really long arms. So I've just got much further way to pull myself when it comes to doing pull-ups. But hey it's you know that's that's my that's my leverages and that's what i've got uh and i think yeah that was six reps if i'm not mistaken uh, and then i finished up with a back off set again on the loo raises with just five kilos in each hand before previously i was doing 10 uh, and just trying to get as many reps as possible get a nice pump into my anterior my post medial deltoids sorry so the middle part of your shoulder, trying to focus on building that my muscle connection. Whenever I do these, I try and make sure that I depress my shoulders. So I, I'm trying to push my shoulders down as far as possible. And then the sort of majority of that range of motion is coming through the deltoids. You know, there's inevitably going to be some movement of the scapula across the upper back as you as you do this movement, as you move your arms over and behind the back of your head. But, you know, I'm trying to make sure that the primary mover of this movement is maybe the upper traps, but also um, mostly the medial deltoid. Then finished up with some farmer carries. I don't usually do these, but oh my God, they're so good for uh, training grip strength, but also making sure that you've got good posture and you've also got uh, like a, a functional and strong uh, upper body and stability in the upper body while you're carrying weight and moving. I supersetted that with some neck extensions with my <laughs> my head harness. I think it looks so stupid when you're wearing it, but um, you, know, you know how it is. Then I did some single arm, like uneven farmer carries or suitcase carries with 40 kilos. So previously it was like 20 kilos in each hand. And then it was like, I put both of them into one hand. Again, uneven, like a very difficult, uh, thick uh, handle to grip, uh, which also worked really nicely on 
stability in that frontal plane. I find that when you do farmer carries unevenly or suitcase carries, you have to have a lot more stability in the frontal plane because you're holding all the weight on one side. The other side has the obliques on the other side and all of the, the muscles, you know, the QL, the obliques, uh, all of those muscles that keep you stable uh, and stop you from crumpling along one side, uh, they have to work over time in order to keep you in that position. And then obviously the, the, the weight to carry and the uneven farmer carry, that also works it uh, high-low as well. So you're getting not just frontal plane, but also a little bit of transverse plane stability as well to stop you rotating excessively. And lastly, finished up with some rice bucket work. I'm doing sort of five minutes a day on this uh, just to get a nice pump in my forearms and wrists. Really great way to work those smaller, less used muscles, especially the wrist extensors uh, in the wrists and the hands. All right, guys, that is pretty much it for me today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy my forearm pump right here. Yeah, it's pretty paltry, but, you know, getting better. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.